Hey, we are Colby and Eric, better known as the Engineers Who Van Life, and this right here behind us is our second DIY conversion van. Um, this one we built last summer. We built it out over the course of three months, and it has everything you could ever need in a conversion van. Before we get started, um, a little bit more about ourselves. Like I said, we are the Engineers Who Van Life. We are full-time engineers who live and work on the road. I'm a software engineer. And I left that nine to five corporate grind to live and travel full time, consulting, blogging, and doing all sorts of DIY van build work for folks like you on the road. So let's get started. Check it out. In today's van tour, we're going to go through all of our exterior upgrades, the electrical and plumbing systems we built to live off grid, how we build with AD20 extruded aluminum for a bomb proof build, and then the more nerdy details of our internet system, our lizard skin ceramic insulation, and our amazing marine grade CUSA flooring system. Our Van Rover is a 2022 Ford Transit high roof extended. It's a 3.6 liter EcoBoost engine with all wheel drive. What we really love about the Fords is their service network of over 3000 dealerships across the country, which means that anywhere you are in the country and need something done, the parts are gonna be common and you're gonna be able to get work done quickly and at a pretty reasonable cost. Then other things we like include it having a sh the shortest wheelbase of the three major long wheelbases, which gives it the tightest turning radius and kind of the easiest to drive, the most comparable to you know, a smaller car. And it also has the highest roof to accommodate taller people like me. On our exterior, you'll notice that we applied a flexible urethane coating, Raptor liner, to our hood and lower trim to prevent rock chips and ultimately rust when debris is kicked up by other vehicles or when driving long gravel roads. Our AT tire of choice has been an oversized BF Goodrich KO2 paired with an aluminum wheel by Flarespace. And with the added tire size, there's no one else we would trust other than Quigley to give our van a two inch Q lift along with upgrading our shocks and adding a sway bar. Moving on to our Flatline Vanco accessories, we added a nudge bar with the hopes of adding exterior lighting, but so far it's just served as a cosmetic facelift. Then our sturdy FVC ladder gets us to our safari roof rack, which is an awesome hangout spot if space is tight at a crowded national park. Notice we lifted our roof rack up three inches with some 8020 extruded aluminum, such that our two automatic max air fans raise up under our solar panels to synergize on roof space. Our solar panels are 370 watt half cut Rec Pro solar panels with a black back sheet for a total of 740 watts of solar. Then we have our internet antenna mounted high on our roof with an external ground plane and some outdoor security cameras from Simply Safe that are recharged by these adorable mini solar panels. Finally, our full sized spare tire no longer fits under the van, so we needed to move it to our roof rack. Before going to Alaska this summer, we thought it was important to add a couple of gallons of extra fuel storage just to increase our self sufficiency. Last but not least is probably our most identifiable feature, and that's these flares by Flare Space. We painted them yellow with tintable Raptor liner and of course added the Arctic turn bunk windows to one side. Speaking of Arctic turn windows, we choose these for all our windows because they are double paint acrylic and are the most insulating of any van window out there, which is really important to us in the winter time when we're out skiing. Moving on to our electrical system, we have 540 amp hours of 12 volt lithium batteries and typically use about a third of that every day. These are charged by our 740 watts of solar on our roof, which is directed to separate Victron MPPTs and also two Victron Orion 30 amp DC to DC chargers that charge off our alternators while we drive. Our 3000 watt Victron inverter has never let us down and we tie all of this together with two Victron Lynx distributors. To get the point, redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. When we move on to our water system, we chose a 32 gallon over wheel well water tank. Through the winter, we can stretch it 10 to 14 days, but when we're using water more liberally in the summer, it lasts us about half that long. We plumbed our whole van using 100% brass fittings with pex piping throughout and expansion fittings and have had a 0% leak rate. We added manual ball valves throughout the system to make isolating lines for service easy. All of our water is filtered through a three stage water filter with 20, two and 0.2 micron filters that makes even the sketchiest water fills potable. Both our water tank and shore power ports are kept internal to the van to minimize the RV look. And we utilize quick connects to make filling our water tank effortless and requires no monitoring. When we can't find a regular water fill, 
we can stop at any lake, creek, or stream to pump water directly into our tank, passing it through our filter set again as it enters our freshwater tank. For points of use, we found the best faucet for van life because it has water control at the faucet head, which is great for water conservation. Our drinking water is also filtered through an Acuva Aramax 2.0 UV water filter for the cleanest and safest drinking water we can have. Finally, we built a built-in shower in a bench solution. We framed it all out of 8020 extruded aluminum, built a custom welded stainless steel shower pan out of 16 gauge stainless steel, and inside also fits our Cuddy composting toilet by Compo Closet. As it turns out, we really only use it for number ones just because we don't like to empty the solids super frequently, uh, but we do use it for emergencies. And then for showering, we actually prefer to shower outside most of the year except for maybe just the winter, and that's just because of the extra effort it takes to set up the shower curtain and hang it on the eye bolts from the ceiling. And speaking of water systems, for both of our point of uses, we have both hot and cold water, which brings us to our Eberspacher hydronic heater. We knew we would be spending significant times at altitude skiing, so we opted for a heater that can handle up to 16,000 feet. The Aqua system is a five kilowatt heater and siphons gas directly from our fuel tank and vents combusted air outside but also has an electric backup for when you're plugged into shore power. The live temperature control means that the heater senses how warm it is inside and automatically adjusts lower or higher to provide a stable interior air temperature. It has not let us down yet and has kept us warm all winter, even through spells well below zero. Of course, you can't talk about heaters without first talking about insulation, and our insulation strategy starts from the very beginning with lizard skin ceramic spray and sound deadener applied to the inside of our van to slow the heat gain and thermal bridging effects from the outside. Then we use Havelock wool in all of our wall cavities and 3M thin slit in our ceiling just because it stays put a little better with spray adhesive. And finally, we added a 3mm low E closed cell foam as a contact barrier on the back side of all of our wall panels to further prevent thermal bridging. Probably the coolest part of our build is also the least sexy thing you can think of, but I wanna dive a little bit into that. Our subfloor is the brand new Rainier system by Just Drumming Design, and is a fiberglass reinforced Kusa foam. It's an extremely rigid and rugged material and boasts an R value of about two and a half and serves as the structure for our subfloor, meaning that your subfloor is a mere three quarter inch thick with zero thermal bridging saving us precious headroom inside and is about 40% lighter when compared to plywood subfloors. In addition, it only took me about three hours to install because it comes perfectly CNC cut to your chassis. It has absolutely zero squeak, bounce, play, and all in all just makes our second Van Rover about a thousand times better than our first Van was. You can also order it with channeling for in-floor radiant heat, but we didn't opt for that and honestly feel like our feet have never been cold even throughout the depths of winter just because we chose a rather warm floating cork floor throughout the living interior. We found the subfloor to actually be the least important part of the whole van insulation process because in the summer all of the heat gain comes from above and during the winter your final floor material is going to have a much greater impact on the actual cold feeling on your feet than rather than the subfloor insulation itself which is why we chose floating cork tiles because cork is a natural insulator. And then we trimmed off our uh, cork floor uh, at the slider and rear doors with four by two inch angled aluminum and we coated it with a black Raptor liner just for aesthetics and durability. Our garage flooring material of choice is a two tech two from Campervan HQ and it's a felt backed woven acrylic that is both super durable and is easy to maintain. As far as our interior design and layout goes, we started with a fixed bed design in back because we hated setting up and taking down our bed every day in our first van. Flares from flare space were a necessity for us to sleep sideways, seeing as I'm six foot one. And we recently upgraded our mattress to a custom five inch, four layer foam mattress from Roamrest. You'll notice we walled off the back doors, which not only serves to provide a cozy bedroom area on the inside, but also a fully functional gear wall accessible from the rear, where we can hang our skis, ice axes, backpacks, and other outdoor gear. Comes in clutch in the winter when we can just swing open the rear doors and not let all of the warm air from inside out in a matter of seconds. And then a full perimeter of strip lights was a nice touch that we didn't really know we needed until we actually hit the road. And finally, all of our wall panels on the bedroom side are padded and upholstered with Pad 5 wall panel foam and Nassimi fabric, both from Campervan HQ. 
In our bedroom, we have large upper cabinets built with 10 series 8020 extruded aluminum, solid maple shaker style doors with soft close hinges, gas struts, and ball catch latches. Believe it or not, these upper cabinets weigh only 16 pounds and can hold more weight than we would ever need them to. Moving forward in the van, we have a nearly six foot long main kitchen galley with a two foot pop-up extension that provides tons of counter space for cooking all our own meals. Again, we constructed the galley out of 15 series 8020 extruded aluminum with soft close undermount drawer slides, polished stainless steel two inch boat catch latches, and sturdy birch drawers. Half inch paper stone countertops can be found throughout the van and are manufactured from recycled paper layered with a phenolic resin and colored with melamine, meaning you can get basically whatever color you want. Overall, it's about half the weight compared to butcher block and is an incredibly durable yet soft countertop material to work with. We opted for non-built-in cook surfaces so we can use our large counter as a standing desk during the day to support full-time work as engineers, while also being able to plug in two separate induction cook plates for mealtime. Colby's standing desk setup includes an external monitor and several other optional work from van accessories for ergonomics. And we got our internet through a 7-in-1 MIMO antenna that collects signal from outside and brings it into a mobile router where we can toggle the LTE bands to find the ones with better local bandwidth and avoid the ones that are clogged with all of the cell phone traffic nearby. The router also has speed fusion technology that gathers signal from multiple data carriers and delivers a fused Wi-Fi network to ensure robust and reliable connections that can host all the Zoom calls we need completely lag free. The armoire opposite the main galley is designed in the same way as everything else in our build. Using 8020 to maximize the strength to weight ratio and ultimately storage. In general, Colby gets the two upper cabinets in the bedroom and I get the slightly smaller armoire and then we each get a single drawer below the armoire. One final touch that we added about six months into living in the van was a second fold down table accessible from the outside of our van through the slider door when it's open. And it just provides an additional space option, which is always a plus when living in a van. And that pretty much wraps up our van tour. If we were to recommend building your own van DIY versus getting a professional to build your van, we would probably recommend somewhere in between. Build as many of the projects as you can on your own without being afraid to contract out some specific projects that you feel you just don't have the expertise for. Especially if you're planning on living in your build full time versus just keeping it as a weekend vehicle, knowing how to service as much of your build as possible is going to save you so much headache down the road when something eventually breaks. Which brings us to today's exclusive video sponsor, us. We, the engineers of Van Life, offer both virtual consulting and in-person DIY van building help. We can answer all of your DIY van building questions, guide you through the process, and even hook you up with some pretty sweet product discounts. We host the website engineersofvanlife.com, which has tons of free DIY van building guides. Then as we travel around the country, we can come directly to you to help speed up your van build, take on projects you want to outsource, and add a professional touch to your build. If you found any of this information useful, feel free to use some of our affiliate links down in the video description below. We earn a small commission at absolutely no extra cost to you, and it helps us put out more great content like this. And if you made it all the way to the end, remember to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm to help us out a little.